Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Thriving Talk. This is our 40th episode of Thriving Talk. 4040th? No, 48th. 48th, okay. Yeah, 48th episode of Thriving Talk. And we are excited to uh, bring this episode to everyone. So, so, by the way, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. I'm just uh, hoping that uh, you're also doing good. I'm doing good. Okay. Yeah. So... Today we um so I hope everyone enjoyed last week's episode where we talked about how we talked about our summer and different experiences we had. Let's be honest, it was last week or well, a couple of weeks back okay. when we posted it, but okay. yeah. So so because before you are going to start me some questions, I want to make sure I ask some questions to you too. <laughs> okay. So yeah. So in last week's episode, we talked about how my dad took up a leadership role. And for today's episode, um, we are going to um, uh, talk about. So he got interviewed by um, by uh, interviewing th- thing, and um, they asked some interviewed questions. Interviewed by a paper, like a, a Christian paper. paper. Yeah, a Christian paper. So. Um, they asked some questions to my dad after he took up the role. And today, um, I took some questions out of that paper, and I'm going to ask, be asking you the questions, and you're going to like share with all our Thriving Talk viewers. Um, yeah, I'm not sure whether I will be responding in the same way, but I will try my level yeah. best. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because that was a paper, and this is live. So. Yeah. And um, a quick reminder that Thriving Talk is available on all different platforms like iTunes, Google Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, and many more things. So make sure to follow on Thriving Talk on your favorite platform. So let's get started with today's episode. So as my first question, the first question is, as a senior pastor, how do you view Pentecost in America today? So before I... Respond to that question. Let me ask you, do you have a title for this uh, episode? Yes. So the title is My Church and My Hopes. My Church and My Hopes. Okay. So uh, just just to make it a little bit more uh, clearer for all the v- listeners. Um, yes, I was asked some questions and uh, Tim is picking up some questions from there. So first question he had was, or originally the first question I asked was, a senior pastor, how do you do... How do you view Pentecost in America today? So I think despite many challenges, there are many sincere people um, who are focused on doing the will of God and are committed to true spirituality. And I'm optimistic about the future uh, while trusting in God. So there is a remnant who is sincerely praying. And uh, when I say sincerely praying, there are also many places where prayer has become, I don't know, it's like a, something to be cool about. Or, you know, if you are, uh, you know, doing some prayer, you know, you are seen as hype, a little bit more spiritual. I'm not talking about that, but I'm saying there are, there are people who are sincerely praying and seeking a change and revival. Uh, at times, the younger generation is frustrated by the lack of true spirituality in people who claim to have that. And uh, many want to focus on um, genuine spirituality and things that matter for eternity. So, but at the same time, since you were asking um, about this, I also feel like there are challenges, like there is a generational gap, uh, which leads to preferences and different views about worship styles and social and cultural issues. And it is impacting the growth and the mission of the church. In some places, people are fine without seeing the spiritual gifts in operation or any move the Holy Spirit in the churches. Well, you know, when you talk about Pentecostal churches, that is one of the hallmark of Pentecostal churches, the movement of the Holy Spirit and operation of spiritual gifts and uh, things related to that. But we have many places where it doesn't even um, appear that people really care about those things. So... What happens is in many places, uh, these type of churches are existing for their own comfort and have no concern even for the lost souls, leave alone a revival or something. So I think that these things are very counter to the authentic uh, Pentecostal experience we um, should have and we think about. So um, that's what I think is what is happening today. So on one side, you do have sincere people who are very genuinely 
seeking the Lord, but on the other side, we also have what I would call as unauthentic or fake spirituality. So there's like types of people different. Yeah, just just I would say that that's that's a real problem. So, like, can you name like a couple of things that should not be done in like Pentecostal churches? Y- yeah, is- I would say it's not just Pentecostal churches, but yeah, even any church. church. I think uh, the first thing is we should not be nurturing uh, fake spirituality and ignoring our local missions. I'm somebody who goes on foreign missions, but I want to say something. I cannot hide myself. um under the foreign machine thing uh, missions thing and just ignore everything which is happening locally because um when we talk about foreign missions maybe someday I want to talk more about it but it's 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 not the way it used to be when we talk about foreign missions in the past there were people missionaries who would sacrificially go to a place and do the ministry lot of hardship today it's it's like a vacation so sometimes nowadays we hear that hey join a mission trip and uh, after the mission trip there will be fun activities vacation and all so people are combining missions with fun which is um i have personally don't have a problem but my saying is what is happening is when you ignore the local missions and you are nurturing a false spirituality that is absolutely a problem number 2 is um, this whole aspect of giving glory and exalting people pleasing people more than god So a lot of times what we see is you know there are a lot of uh, people who are um you know focused on their own kingdom growth so that's a problem and then i think um ignoring the fundamental teachings of jesus like true forgiveness reconcile life um ignoring those basic fundamental things while claiming to hold on to big big things is a problem for example um i am not following uh, truthfully um what jesus has taught me simply but i'm 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 crossing the oceans to teach people about uh, bigger things um i think that is also a problem so these i don't know there will be more but i just want to stick with a few here uh, i think these are all problems like you know the at the fundamental i think the core issue is any time there is fake spirituality being nurtured in any form or fashion i think that's should not be done in any church so like What are some changes or like suggestions that you think that should be like mandatory in any type of church like some changes that churches could make Yeah I think to um make it better Yeah the, so I I'm, I'm going to focus on the spiritual aspect side of course yeah. right because you know when you look at a church there are many aspects to it but um I fundamentally I feel like there needs to be an emphasis on developing a kingdom mindset over an individual mindset within the church. What I mean by that is our salvation is individualistic, you know, in the sense like we have a personal relationship with Jesus, but when you look at the plan of God, God did not save us and put us in an island. Um if if that was God's intent then there was there would not have been a concept of church in the Bible. Right? So when you look at uh, Jesus Jesus said I will b- build my church but then starting from the book of Acts you see church all over even the book of Revelation talks and addresses churches and these epistles majority of them were written to churches or leaders in churches it has an impact so even though we have this individual experience but we need to have that kingdom mindset where uh, we are always focused on that aspect So I also hear a lot of times people say we need to grow our church and our organization. I think we are prioritizing on the wrong things. So when we focus on kingdom growth and winning souls, churches and organizations will automatically grow. See I I'm a part of a few organizations and a lot of times I have trouble when people say you know we need to grow our organization or you know our church or something at the cost of anything. No, that's not the right approach. when we are focused on the kingdom growth mindset i think it will automatically happen so we have to understand this why we are part of one team and we have one mission and i usually say this father god initiated this project which i'd like to call a save humanity project by sending his son jesus christ and what a privilege we have that he called us to be part of his team we were hand picked just imagine sometimes um, 
let's say there is a big assignment um, like you know the mayor of the city or the governor of the state or the president of the country um, they want to do a major project and uh, somehow you get a call from their office saying that the mayor or the governor or the president wants to talk to you because they have a special assignment for you in the project which is coming up how how happy you will feel how privileged you will feel just imagine you get a call from white house and they are saying that for some some upcoming thing they want you to be part of it and uh, so but to think about this um, the 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 team we are part of the mission we are part of is a mission is a project initiated by the creator god and this is the most important thing in the world that is to save perishing people like people who have lost without jesus without hope to bring them back to the father's house right that's a that's a huge uh, uh, initiative and now the question is are we playing as a team or are we just trying to score our own goals so if we are um, you know playing for ourselves even if we score five goals but if the team loses it it is not of much um, use like we fail we lost anyway so we need to reach a point where what matters is not our individual accomplishments but saving people from eternal condemnation um, it will require churches to become mission focused mission minded and not issue focused a lot of time churches are spending so much of energy and time and effort on issues dealing with issues mainly because of personal agenda personal thing like you know i want to have what you have your role you know what you if you have a role i want to have that then i'm playing all the games to somehow get that role and uh, so there is a lot of things many times people go through but the thing is when you come to that mindset and you are mission focused as a church uh, what happens is we need to put the uh, issues at the at the back back burner so just imagine like um, you know there was a couple um a husband and wife they were having a argument about something suddenly their ch- child falls down and gets injured will they continue the argument or will they stop the argument and take the child and run to the emergency what what do you think take the child and run to them take the child and run to the emergency run to the emergency i i think we are in an emergency state where the world is lost and uh, all these things are happening and we are wasting a, and ignoring that emergency we are spending our energy and time on individual battles and unproductive things with, without thinking that we need to be engaged in a, in a major thing so so i'm i think fundamentally if this change can come there we can gain a lot and that will lead us in the right direction so now we're going to talk about some of your like personal things and like some of your favorite things so it will be like quick questions and you can like share so the first question is what is like one unforgettable experience in your life that you could share yeah there are many unforgettable experiences but one thing i um, remember is uh, when i was young and uh, there was a christian evangelical movement like the cm youth camp happening in delhi um i think i went there with not too much of expectation but that meeting was very powerful in the sense like that transformed my life in many ways because um i think um, a lot of passion and um, desire for the missions came basically what happened was i was there and in all the meetings all the sessions i was basically crying in the presence of the lord and i think uh, there was a big big change in my life then of course back in 2021 all of our listeners know about this i was diagnosed with a disease um which led me on a long journey yeah. and that was that uh, completely changed um, direction in my life so those are some un- memorable experiences in life so like what is your like nowadays like what are some like your favorite sermon themes or like topics you like to preach about and yeah about? F- fundamentally i like to teach more than preach okay <laughs> um it's simply because i think i have a better gifting in that uh, that's that's what i have un- understood so anyway so as you ask these days i am more focused on training in godliness that's a series i'm taking down it is in the church yeah. 
um which is which has to do with spiritual disciplines now i am convinced that unless and until uh, we don't cultivate a strong inner spiritual life there will always be a lot of unscriptural unspiritual behaviors in individual lives and in churches um i i think there is very less emphasis on those spiritual reflections which is leading to a lot of problems in the churches so we will we will see the spiritual climate change if people can slow down invest in quiet time and develop a solid personal relationship with god um i be, i believe in focusing more on the transformation through teaching simple truths of the word of god than unsustainable temporary emotional moves because that can always generate excitement but um, i feel like it may not be sustainable but you know that the truths of the word of god needs to be ingrained and you know really uh, should come across uh, and then that can really lead to um, life transformations so like who is like your most influential person in like who who is used to do or does the ministry and like what from his life has inspired you and like what uh did have you learned from him Or yeah from i would say from his history there are many many people right but i think uh, one person stands out um for many reasons um uh, i would say adoni ram judson he went as a missionary to burma he was coming to india but then he was a missionary there so three things i would say his uh, sacrifice his vision and his commitment have influenced me a lot so the story goes like this uh, when he went there uh, there was nothing but he had a plan to see um, you know church with i don't know i think 100 people or something but by the time he completed his ministry there were 8000 believers and then also he translated the bible um and then he did he did lot of lot of great things you know maybe some day we should talk about that but um what left a mark in my life is his one of his quote which says there is no success without sacrifice if you succeed without sacrifice it is because someone has suffered before you if you sacrifice without success it is because someone will succeed after that that is an eye opener that was an eye opener when i first heard this so a lot of times we want success yeah but uh, we have to really understand that without sacrifice um, there is no success sometimes you may get it but um, that's not the case all the time especially when it comes to ministry when it comes to missions when it comes to all those things sometimes years of sacrifice may lead you to great successes so uh, i think adoni ram judson stands out as somebody who has greatly influenced me um, you know from a spiritual standpoint Oh, uh, what's your favorite spiritual song or like your favorite? There are there are many, but one which again just like Ninja. I was saying earlier, one which stands out is there is a um, song called a step by step. So it goes like this, I need not ask what time will bring while to my savior's hands I cling, you know, step by step he will lead me. Um I think there are many moments in my life um especially when I was going through challenging times, sickness where i this song has comforted me and all has uh, ministered to me so so i think that stands out there are many other in different languages too but this song is is really something where i feel like i can go back and listen uh whenever i feel a little down i think this song just you know lifts me up and gives me the strength to move on what are the, like four things you think that today's generation should do and like why In, uh in what way you know spiritually okay <laughs> yeah so one thing i would say is be faithful in your spiritual pursuits uh give no place for manipulation or have no hidden agenda in life see whatever we have it's god's gift if you have a ministry if you have a anything right so just completely trust in him and uh, don't be tensed don't be don't try to gain anything because um at the end of the day man is just a you know one breath you know if you are not able to take <laughs> to breathe properly or if you don't you know so you you're done so there is there is no point in fighting for anything so but truthfully pursue spiritual life uh, you know 
be truthful and uh, second thing i would say honor god by following god's word completely do not be selective in obeying the teachings of jesus christ obey him completely obey all of it obey yeah be very faithful in obeying the lord and don't just follow a few things here and there but and then just show this fake christianity fake spirituality no then do not compete with one, one another but work together and use your gifts for kingdom goals there is no point in competing why do we need to compete we are part of one team yeah. and uh, what matters is whether our team will win or not and the fourth thing i would say do not forget the great commission use your time energy and talents in whatever poss- way possible to um, accomplish the great commission and bless others be a blessing for others so that, those are the things which i would say uh, the today's generation should focus on so next question what is your point of view in on like church meetings like what should be done and like what are some changes you, um churches can make to make church meetings better and more yeah i think i think nowadays a lot of times people want to take credit for everything i i see that all the time by manipulation also sometimes people are trying to take credit so i would say avoid people accommodation for wrong reasons in church meetings you know do not divert from the word of god or be silent on some matters to please others right sometimes just to f- please others we try don't do that the second thing i would say uh ministry of word should be given importance and the time should not be reduced from that so a lot of times you know churches have announcements um this that everything and then when it comes to the word of god it's just few minutes 10 minutes i've been in places where you know somebody will tell the the preacher that uh, you have to speak for 30 minutes or 40 minutes and after they have done with all the ceremonies and you know after they have done with everything there will be like seven minutes left i was in a place where you know at the end there was like five to 10 minutes left so basically um there is a lot of uh time spent on stuff uh, but i i would said if we ignore the time uh, for the word of god that is going to make us weak because if you don't eat food spiritual food will make us spiritually weak just like you know not having food physical food will make us physically weak so uh, very important the third thing i would say do not get used to lack of experience in god's presence in the church uh, every day will not be the same um there will be spikes where you know there will be you know some days there will be different experiences but but do not get used to this whole thing like you go to church and come back and you know simply going coming going coming very predictive i know i am going there there will be songs there will be preaching i will come back no don't get into that mode you know have that hunger do not be satisfied if a church is becoming traditional and not spirit filled and spirit led um always have this hunger and thirst deep inside of uh, your heart that uh, you know i want to experience god's presence in my life so i think those are very important things and it's time for us to focus on those things and make changes in these areas if that's a real uh, uh, problem identified within the context in which we are what are like some good things or like benefits about pentecost Or yeah so so pentecost was a movement right so which was mission focused obedience to the word of god and consecrated life emphasize on leading a spirit filled life and operation of spiritual gifts these were all benefits uh, or i would say things which were very key to the pentecostal movement and i think even in today's generation that should not be a tradition or a namesake thing which we still say but it should be an experience within our life and in our churches so what i said is you know we should be mission focused we should have obedience to the word of god we should have a uh, consecrated life separated life we should have you know there should be real emphasis on being spirit led and um, you know if god you know we should pray for spiritual gifts because bible teaches us to earnestly desire spiritual gifts so we should we should have uh, that view point in our life So as my last question, can you name like two or three changes that you would like to see in like the new organization that you took the leadership? Not new organization, but like, my new leadership. Yeah, role. <laughs> your new leadership role. In I don't want people to be confused because sometimes I <laughs> yeah. go to places and people introduce me and when I hear that I I think 
when did i become that you know <laughs> when did i how did i become that it's like a over yeah yeah no so this in the organization so i think a um, few things which within a, uh, the organization where i give leadership i want to focus on building up stronger relationship between churches and people so that we can work as one team for the expansion of god's kingdom rather than expanding my own kingdom or anyone's kingdom because we are not uh, but that will uh, require a lot of humbling on everyone's side and support uh, we should also focus on empowering and encouraging pastors and their families so that no one will quit the ministry because we live in a times where so many people are you know leaving the ministry uh, but if we can encourage Uh, there will be more significant commitment coming from their side and a sacrificial life with that kingdom mindset which is so key so, so those are some of the things where i want to focus personally speaking so thank you for sharing and today's episode was more like an interview type and i was asking my dad questions and um he answered many questions from his point of view on his is his different things that he has in his mind and i hope you all enjoyed listening to this episode and um i want to thank you all for listening and i hope you can use two or three things that my god ta- uh, just two or three <laughs> uh, or like um or uh, whatever you can get out of my what my dad said use it in your life and um so thank you for listening and um as i said in the beginning this episode is available on all like all different platforms so do not forget to follow or subscribe to thriving talk and um our new episodes will come out and also remember that my dad has a newsletter and how often is it no that's called? one once in a month and once this a is month. actually by week like every two weeks like two like twice in a month the yeah, thriving so talk thriving podcast talk is twice in a month thriving new, you know newsletter is once in a month because of the season in which we are yeah. it's it's very difficult to yeah so yeah. thriving talk two times yeah. a month and but don't forget that like, today's episode is called as my church my hopes uh basically what i shared is what i have in my heart when i look at the church at large yeah. so so thank you for listening and, and yeah we'll i hope it was a blessing for all our listeners god bless you god be with you thank you